Okay. So I'm I okay. Hello, welcome to the second channel. This definitely doesn't feel like something that's worth posting on the main channel because realistically, it's a part of my life that I've, I put behind me uh, years ago. Um, but uh, <laughs> kind of being dug up and granted, I uh, you know I told uh, Maddie this, who is Barney sixty four on on YouTube about it, um, knowing that it probably would end up coming to light. But um, yeah, there's some drama that is happening. I, I'm not at the center of it, but I'm like one of the orbiting satellites that's kind of going around it, um, and it's kind of lame. Uh, uh, it's a very lame situation, but I figured like I might as well talk about it because um, I, I watched Asmigol react to it, and his chat were not very kind to me. I will say Asmigol was very kind to my situation. Um, he's very kind to Maddie's situation as well, which is worse than mine, but... Um, he he was he gave me a lot. He gave me a very fair shake, which I was not expecting. His chat did not though. They, they, they did not give me a fair shake whatsoever. But so, um, it's not their it's not their fuck. It's not their like their whole situation. So I'll I'll, I'll run it back to you. So if you haven't seen Barney sixty four on YouTube, who's Maddie? One of my like actual IRL friends. Uh, I've known her for like a very long time, uh, probably almost ten years at this point. Um, she was working with an agency called Influencer Stuff, who did brand deals and stuff like that. Now. When she started working with them, I said to her, and I said to other people as well, everybody that I've ever known for the last five years that has mentioned that they're working with this 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 brand thing, I've said, don't do it. The guy that runs it is a snake, uh, and he is not looking out for your best interests. He's looking out for he's looking out for the Benjamins. Um, and it took a while for it to happen, but as I sometimes tend to be with things like this, uh. Maddie got like snaked. Like she, she did a, a pre-order campaign for like her uh, rogue in her World of Warcraft series, which was like super popular. You may have seen it, uh, like the the Scarab Wards, like all that kind of stuff. Um, the only reason I'm talking about this is because I have a very strong sneaking suspicion that it's about to do the rounds on like a lot of commentary channels. Uh, just so we're clear, like I, I'm not doing this. I, I want to get ahead of this in some way because I feel like I'm gonna come out of this looking like a dumbass. I, and I, I've already asked Maddie to blur um my uh my name from it because on the original version of it it was not I, but quite frankly i'm just very embarrassed by what happened and it kind of brings up a lot of old, old, old nonsense for me um so yeah the rundown <laughs> supposed to do the pre-order campaign uh promised things that did not happen uh and then like and like I tell you what, like, it, it, it's stuff like this. As somebody who's, like, runs their own clothing line, I do, like, pre-order campaigns as well for some of the stuff. Um, like, literally, I'm doing one right now for, like, the Cowboy Bebop stuff that we're doing. And on top of that, like, we're trying to work with YouTubers. And, like, it's it's honest to God, like, it's, it, it's so, like, I'm not saying that, like, YouTubers have, like, absolutely ho horrendously unrealistic expectations about stuff, but it's because of, like, people, like, influencer stuff who, like, promised things that they, they, they that simply don't make sense right like they, they promise like yeah we can do like a 25 dollar plushie and then like maddie was saying earlier on stream today she's like actually it turned out that like the cost of the plushie to make was like fucking 80 dollars and it's like that is like an insane price differential like how does this happen all right why i don't know what i don't know i don't know why we went for tristana there i think it was a better call going for the the thingy there because Lulu, like, walk straight past. All right, okay, I don't like this one, but sorry. I don't. I, I should have gone, like, jungle or something, because I, I realized that I have to fight here. But, yeah, we're trying to work with, like, we, we, we'd really want, we really want to work with YouTubers and make, like, good clothing, because we can make good stuff. But, like, people are just promising nonsense, and it's all ass-quality stuff as well. Now, uh, from what I can gauge, Maddie's uh, plushie actually turned out to be incredibly good quality stuff, which is fantastic. But still, like, it's just... These, these nonsense promise in the world when you know for a fact that you can't make it. It's so annoying. So, um, he took the money. She never got paid. Like, it took, like, a year or, like, six months or something for all these plushies and stuff to get sent out, which is just something that should not happen. Um, and then what ended up happening was... Uh, turns out this is not, like, the first thing... The first time that this has ever happened to this guy. Like, he... And I, I, I date back, like, four or five years. So like 2016, 2017 is when I had my my situation with him, and 
that's why like for the last half a decade i've been saying to people like keep your keep your back to the wall because they might you may end up putting a damn knife in it you know what i mean um my situation with this guy um was that uh i had known him for a long time at that point even at that point i'd known him for like three or four years i i thought he was my friend um and then the company that he was actually starting influencer stuff was something that he funnily enough something that he and i talked about initially doing together and i was like like this that's how like i i, I thought he was a great guy he I, I felt like he was looking out for me uh he ended up just starting the thing himself it didn't bother me in any regard but um my channel just started to do badly at that time and like uh, like it was it was doing not great uh and you know one thing i've seen over uh like on like when, when asmigo was reacting to this his chat and I, I think many many people may assume like, you know, and, and it was something that the the guy Pikio who was working with um, uh, influencer stuff at the time also said to me like he was like you're not like sad or anything like that like your channel is just in a in a in a slump. But I I think anybody that like has been doing uh, Twitch or YouTube for any length of time. Sometimes, like, you get so, like, bogged down in the numbers that, like, your mood is, like, literally determined by, like, how well you are doing on YouTube on that day, right? It's it's an insane thing to, like, say and think about, but, like, it's true, right? Like, if, you, if you're, if you on if you're like, on the come up and all your videos are doing well and, like, you're getting lots of views and, like, you just feel like things are going your way, like, your mood, you're, like, walking on sunshine constantly. And the second things start to go wrong, like, everything can kind of come stumbling down. So... Um, I was absolutely fine with Richard for a long time, like Pikio. We were, we, we were, he would get deals for me, that was fine. Um, so then, like, at one point, he offered me a battle right deal, and it was like $1,000 for like a 30 60 second thing at the beginning of a video. I like battle right, I thought battle right was a really cool game, uh, and it, they, they, it was made by the same people that did like Bloodline Champions, so I was like, I'm absolutely okay with doing this i'm gonna get my ass beat here um but he also like uh suggested like like one or two other games that were like really bad i i they were just like cruddy mobile games and i was like ugh. but like the 1k was still i got I'm dumb. The, the, I, I needed the money, right? Like, I, I was not, like, in, like, necessarily a great financial position. So, I was like, right, cool. We'll do it. Um, and I, I spent a lot of calls with this guy. Like, we'd, we'd have, like, multiple, like, calls a week sometimes. Where, like, we're just talking. And he's kind of, not, like, talking me off the ledge. But he's, like, you know, trying to talk me out of, like, just giving everything up altogether. Um, so, like, I trusted the guy. Um, and, like, I, I explained, like, that just, I was in, like, a super, like, crappy place altogether, and, um, we, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I cried, I mean, I, I, I quite, I'll be the first to, like, just say, like, I, I, I cried on Mike to this guy, like, it was, so, it was somebody that I, uh, I, I confided in, for sure, and, so I did the battle rate one, and that was okay, that was all good. And then he was like, I'll, I'll pay you for it or whatever. That was fine. But I will admit, I will say, like, I backed out of the other one. Or it was either one or two. I can't remember what. But I, I ended up backing out of the other sponsor because I was like, this is, like, really garbage. And I was like, I don't feel like whatever audience I have left at this point, I can just sell out for, like, 1K for a game that I don't like. Um, Battle Rate was fine because I like Battle Rate and I think it was cool. But other stuff, I was like, I don't think I can do this. Um... And like I think we ended up having a call over that time, and he was like not happy about it, and like he 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 was just like I don't know. This was my friend, and I was like he was pissed off at me, and I was like I want my I just want him to stop being angry at me. So I was like, all right, dude, whatever. If you're like if, if if this is how it's gonna be, like just keep the money, like it's not this isn't worth it. Um, and he did. That was it. There was no resistance from that regard. There was no resistance. It was just he was like, yep, sure, cool. And then, like, six months later, I don't necessarily know if, like, things had gotten better on the channel regard, like in any regard, but 
at, at least like you know I'd spoken I, I'd, I'd spoken to Maisie and like being like I'm not in a good place and we'd kind of I, I was kind of coming out the other side of like being in a bad spot uh, but the money the money situation hadn't um, really cleared up any any great degree so uh, this is about 2016 2017 I would say so um, and it's worth mentioning as well that this was around the time where a lot of League of Legends creators were getting uh, Facebook deals now uh, this Facebook deal was probably about ten to twelve thousand dollars a month to stream like I don't know how many hours on Facebook, right? But just just super clear, that's that would, that would, at, like that was a, a, an absolutely life changing amount of money for me potentially, and uh, he one hundred percent weaponized that promise. Like he was like, I can get you this Facebook deal, and I was like, oh, that would be like the most incredible thing of all time. And then like every single time he was like, I any time, single time I was asking for something or asking for money or like whatever, he would flip the subject back to the Facebook deal and be like, hey man, I'm trying to get this Facebook deal or whatever. Like, oh, have you not heard about the Facebook deal? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? I was like, no. And he, he like, for like six months of my life as well, he dangled in front of me like a golden meal ticket that I was, I was very desperate to leap to the occasion to get, man. Like, uh, my friends were getting them, like, Brofresco got them, like, Red Mercy got them, uh, like, Foxdrop, Philol, even like, UK people. Because originally they were like, oh, sorry, they're not doing uh, UK creators right now. And then, like, a European creator got one that was, like, Brofresco, then, like, Foxdrop and, and Fi. And I was like, all right, so it's not a, it's not a location thing. It's a me thing. So, I, but regardless, any time I brought up anything about, like, money or, like, you got any deals or whatever, he would just he would just snip me out of it and go, like, oh, the, the Facebook deal. And Maisie could probably just, like, back me up on this one. Like, that was, like, a period of time where, like, I was just trying to survive until the Facebook deal, man, and, and it never came, right? So, yeah, so I, I'm coming out of, like, the end of, like, a, a sad time in my life, and, you know, you have some time to reflect on it, and you think, right, I, I need to pick up the pieces of, like, the mess that I made back six from six months ago, right? So I'm like, okay, I have not, there's, there's debts that have, I have not collected on, one of which being um, the, the fact that, you know, this man owes me like one thousand dollars and that's like nothing compared to what uh like you know somebody like maddie is owed but i'm begging us lads we gotta we gotta focus fire here we gotta focus fire we're splitting focus on three different people <laughs> just kill who we can kill um so yeah i said to him um, listen, man, I, I think it's kind of messed up that, like, six months ago, or, like, a year ago, or whatever the hell, I can't remember the exact timeline, but I said, listen, man, just keep it, and, and you did. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just don't think that's right. Uh, because we had, we, there's contracts, like, so here's the thing, right? Whether, whether you think, like, oh, he said, keep the money, so the guy should have kept the money or not. Like, there's contracts in place. They're, they ha He has presumably got finances to figure out, right? So that means that, like, you know, I should still be owed that money. Like, it's just... Okay. That's fine. Um, so, I said, like, listen, yeah, this is, this is kind of messed up that you haven't done this. But it's whatever. Give me the money. And then he was like, no, hold on, hold on. I got like I got budgets to figure out. I've got a mortgage to pay. Uh, I've got uh, you know employees to pay, and I, and I'm sitting there like yeah with my fucking money. Like this is mine, man. So I, I badgered him, I badgered him, I badgered him, and, it, and I, I literally like messaged him like most days for like weeks, bro. And I, I was getting to the end of my chain, and I was like I'm sick of this. He was working at the network that my my YouTube network still, which is Omnia Media. <laughs> He was still working there. And by the way, he's running this business on the site. Like, I, I don't know if his, like, his boss knew that he was running this thing. But he's running uh, influencer stuff on the sidelines. Because, you know, I think... Because, like, Omnia Media were doing brand management stuff. Like, it wasn't like they weren't doing, like, what he was doing. But he was just doing it, like, on the side. So I don't know if he was, like, poaching clients or whatever the hell. But I went to some of his colleagues and I was like, Hey, first of all, Richard is doing this. Second of all, um... He's got my money, man. And I was like, this is like a guy who works for your company. So like, can you do something about this? The next day, the next morning, 
I've got the money in my PayPal. And I'm like, okay. So it's really just as easy as that. I just had to go grass him in. I'm taking him out. I'm not letting Larry TP for nothing. Um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, oh, yeah, you're right, actually, Maisie. So, like, the... The, the thing with, uh, around the time where I was, like, really tough for money was because for, like, three to six months on YouTube, I made zero, zero cents. I just left Machinima. This, this is how long ago this is. Like, I, I think it was, like, not long after I, like, left Machinima. Uh, and then Omnia, like, kind of snapped me up. But, like, I was still, like, I, I, I'm not sure if that timeline seems right, but, I, like, I, I, regardless, whatever was happening, money was not good, man. <laughs> um... But I um yeah I I I got like my, my one K back. But there's a lot of people that got like seriously screwed over. I mean I'm in a Discord server. There's probably like a dozen people who are like this guy owes me five figures. Thankfully, I mean I mean I'm in a better financial position nowadays. But still like I don't even I don't know dude I don't know what the hell I would do if somebody owed me ten grand, bro. Because I was like owed a thousand dollars, and that was like a, a lot of money, and it still is a lot of money. Um, and I was like, I was trying to think of anything I could possibly do to to get that money back. And um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, I figure like there's a lot of as I tell you, what, Asmund Gold gave me like a very fair a very fair shake of the whole situation because he said like this is a person who was under duress when they made when when i when, he to, when i told him to keep the money um i i don't know if i like duress is the right word man but like just for like just to be being completely honest bro like in my head at the time like 1k was not worth losing a friend over I, wh what i thought was a friend you know what i mean so like i I was like, I don't care. I, like, I, even though like I need this money, I don't want to like lose a relationship over it. And I think he like very much knew that. Um, and it's kind of messed up. And that's why like I'm kind of embarrassed about the whole situation. Like that's why, because I I my name was in the video, and I was like, uh oh. And then I I made it. I sent a message to Maddie like, I'm really sorry, but like, can you blur me out? And she was like, I, and she like immediately was like, oh my god, I am so sorry. Like, very, like, genuinely apologetic for keeping my many minutes. She's like, I didn't even think. And I was like, I don't blame you at all. But she was like, I'm so sorry. But like, Asmongold's like already reacted to this video. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. So, so uh, like, I, the thing is, if, if I'm being like, super honest about this with all of you i don't think there's any repercussions um at all i don't i i don't think there's gonna be i i don't if i'm so here's the thing right i don't think anybody's gonna get their money um quite honestly and i don't think this guy's not gonna serve be served justice i don't think this guy's gonna have to pay any of the money off and i don't think that anybody's gonna be able to do anything about it um at least the way it would work in the uk so what I would I would argue that he's probably gonna do uh, is probably whatever money's left in the business. So like obviously this co this company influencer stuff has probably been blacklisted to the ends of the earth, right? Like it's probably and, I, and I'm only seeing any of this stuff because like he's based in a different country than me and what he's gonna sue me? Like I'm not even you know <laughs> he's not gonna you can't sue me. I'm in from 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 I'm from Britain, mate. But um. What I think is going to happen is, because this company, obviously, I don't think anybody's going to want to work with this company ever again, because I think this may end up spiraling for him somewhat. Um, you're interrupting my bit. I got a fight for Larry. Uh, so, yeah. So, what I think is going to happen, he's going to pay himself out dividends as much as he possibly can. Probably all of it. Uh, every every person, every employee, if there are already employees left, are gone, right? Uh, I don't think that company owns any actual physical assets, i.e. like a building. Obviously, like his house is going to be in his personal name. It's not attached to a business because that would be stupid if it was. Um, 
So, he pays out dividends to himself, then the company declares bankruptcy, administrators come in, they say, they try and recoup the money to, to get back money for creditors or whatever, uh, which is going to be zero because the company has no assets because it plays, uh, it doesn't, it's not really, it's not like a company that makes something, right? Like, it's not a company that has assets. Like, you, the, the, it's a, it's a middle management company that deals with connecting brands. It's not like, for instance, if, if my company, Cycle Apparel, went bankrupt or if we went into administration and we needed, and people came in to pony up the door for whoever we owe money to, we have, like, stock. So, like, people would be like, all right, well, this stock is worth X amount, so we're going to, well, sell this off for, like, a tenth of what it's worth and then maybe we can make some of the money back, right? Like, that's how it generally works in the UK. So, but these kind of companies, they don't, they don't work in tangible assets. So, there's... There's nothing to sell. So, what's just going to happen in my head is that uh, declare bankruptcy, if administrators come in to sell stuff, they realize there is nothing to sell. And then, um, at that point, like, okay, Richard can't, he can't make another company for the next five years because he's declared bankruptcy on that one. But all of those previous um, debts to whoever like he owes money to are they are tied up to the company so now that that's gone legally there is literally nothing that stops him from you know go away and woe for five years and then coming back and doing the same thing that, that as i say this is why i would know in the uk for a limited company i don't know I, I was speaking to some of the guys in the the discord and like they were saying things that kind of seemed like it rang true as far as like there being a very similar thing that goes there but i think maybe like is it llc in america or something like that but I, like as i say i'm british and i only know how it works in britain mate um there's a lot less teeth involved uh in the british legal system but still but realistically i mean um I, 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 like listen i mean i what i think's happened right I think, and and it's not like I sympathise here. Don't uh, don't get me wrong, but obviously I I've spoken to Sir Richard before. I know that he has his kid and all that kind of stuff, but um, I think that he has taken too much dividends out of the company, a little bit too much, or he's maybe expanded too hard, and he's got people to pay, and then just for like a month or so, just for like a month. His outgoings were higher than his incoming. And what's ended up happening is it started like a chain reaction. So like all of a sudden he's taken like three grand out of the company. And then, but that three grand hasn't been reproduced anywhere else. So now somebody is owed three grand somewhere. But then that person to get their three grand, he has to make somebody else do a brand deal. And then what ends up happening is just like a chain reaction of somebody doesn't get paid because somebody else has to do the work. And that's just like the, bro, that's just brand management companies because they don't actually do anything really. Like they, they, they still serve like a, a solid purpose of like putting brands and comp and like, and, and creators in contact with each other. Like it's not like they sell something, right? Like it's not like you can, it's not like you can like be like, all right, well, we're going to we'll put, we'll put a sale on like if Psycho Power need money desperately or whatever, right? I could be like, we're gonna do a sale, right? We we're, we just gotta get rid of as much as we can and then make some money that way, because we do sell something. We sell something tangible that you could hold in your hands. But like with this, there is never a way for that company to make money without adding an extra person onto the end of the line that is owed money. And I think that's just what's happened. I think that's what's happened. I think he's taken a little bit too much money out. All of a sudden, you start like this fucked up chain reaction of people get, being owed money over and over and over and over again and then but that's just start to snowball because people are getting pissed off and it's just horrible so i don't really know what's gonna happen with it to be honest it's i mean i i i i got i'm one of the few that got their money bro like um and i think the worst thing as well like um I don't, like, want to necessarily, like, reveal private stuff, but I think, like, some of the members of the, like, undisclosed members of the carp crew, like, Magikarp use flies, uh, old kind of, old crew got screwed over, 
And like, I know for like an absolute bona fide fact that like Richard lived inside their asshole for like years. Like he sucked up to them so fucking hard, it's insane. Like he was like, you couldn't get rid of that motherfucker, man. He was desperate to be one of them. And it worked, bro. And he still like fucked them over, man. For like probably five figures. And that's people that he was like wanted to be friends with. Like he tried desperately to be with them. Like be in their videos and like be friends with them and you know, try to like cozy up to them and stuff like that, man. <laughs> Imagine how badly he fuck over people he doesn't like. If he had the chance. Shit's fucking ridiculous, man. I'm fucking dead, man! I kick you by the way, hidden, but Ugh but Yeah, I mean this whole situation is just like incredibly embarrassing for me. I think it's mostly because like the whole situation stemmed from like a very vulnerable part of my life that And and it and it, it feels really like I, I feel like an idiot that like I got taken advantage of or like I was manipulated. Like it feels like I'm an I feel like I'm an idiot. Like it's like, like I got like like skull tricked in RuneScape or something, or somebody lured me into the wilderness with my entire bank. Um but like I was not in the right place, like in the right state of mind. And like I just like I said it to Maddie as well, like I was like, I just wanted my friend to stop being mad at me, man. And that was like it. Turns out like that relationship like meant nothing to that man. So like you know, I don't know. Um but pff, I don't know. There's people that are, that are five figures in the hole. I know that I, I, I know that like with the way that Maddie works as well. I, I don't necessarily my heart doesn't bleed as much for some of the other people because I know they make like daily videos or they make videos that are much more regular. Um, my main concern is like Maddie because I know that her content production cycle is like fucking it's like eight months between videos sometimes like it's an insane obviously she puts a lot of work into it and it kind of relies around like some of the events that actually happen within World of Warcraft so like um, she can't live without something else that provides her cash outside of like just ad revenue you know So, like, she, without that money, she's screwed, man. It's horrible. Like, even if I didn't get my money back, I think, like, I don't know, if, I, I wouldn't see he was, like, my best friend, bro. But, like, he was, like, somebody that I thought that was, like, a close friend. And, like... I think the worst thing about it is that, like, throughout that entire process of me trying to get my money back, I thought I was the one in the wrong. Do you know what I mean? I thought I... I think that's the most fucked up part about the whole situation, bro. Is that, like, when I said, like, listen, I wasn't in the right state of mind when I made that. You contractually owe me that money. Um, I would like that money. He was like, you should take responsibility for your actions. Like, I've got a mortgage. I got a fucking kid. I got, like, employees to pay. Like... You gotta start taking responsibility. How am I supposed to know that you're not in the right state of mind? And I'm like, I'm just like, holy shit, bro. I'm like, I don't know what to do, man. It's it, like, it, it's like, it's insane. And I'm like, on paper, and in, in a chat log, here's the worst thing, right? In a chat log, it looks like he wouldn't, right? Like here, in, in the chat log, it might look like he doesn't have any idea that, like, I am in a bad place, bro. But, like, what it misses out is, like, the four-hour calls where, like, I'm in tears talking about, like, I don't fucking know what I'm going to do in my life. And, like, the the, the hour-long calls where he's sitting there telling me that, like, he's going to help me as much as he can. That's what, like, none of that shit can, like, show, bro. So measurable, man. So like from that moment on, after I got my money, man, I realized I, I I had that fucking I had that epiphany, realizing that he's a complete rat, rat bastard of a human being, and that was it, man. I was like, I'm gonna do as much as I possibly can to stop people from working with that man. Now I actually, funnily enough, I did a deal with influencer stuff years later, right? 
But I, I literally said, because he was like, this was when my channel was on the come up or whatever, and I, and he, and he, and he messaged me, or somebody messaged me from influencer stuff, and I was like, I don't want to work with that man. I don't want to talk to that man. I never want to speak to that man. I was like, I, I'll maybe do this deal as long as you're the one that's getting the commission from this, and I never have to speak to Richard. And the guy was like, obviously this guy just wants his commission rights. So he was like, I'll see what I can do. And then uh, this, this guy was called uh, Bun Actually, you know what? I should not. Uh, you know what? He's an ex-employee. I'm not even going to fucking say his name. Sorry, I almost did. Um, but yeah, I said to the ex-employee, I, I, I literally, I got on a call with the ex-employee and I told him that his boss is a rat bastard. And I said, your, rat, your, your boss is a fucking snake. And I don't want to speak to him. I will speak to you. But I want to make sure that you get all of, of the commission money from this. Like, I don't want any of that fucking money going to him, right? I want this to be going to you. He said that, that he said that's fine. Who knows? There's probably some of that money that went to him, right? But I was like, I ain't working with that motherfucker, right? Uh, but I'll, I'll work with you. Two months later, he messaged me on Discord saying, Hey, I just want to let you know you were right about him. He just wants to collect creators like fucking Pokemon cards. Uh, and like, you were right. And I was like... And then Richard messages me, and I'm like, "What did I? What was the one fucking stipulation that I said that I that I was? Oh, I didn't. I said I never want to fucking speak to you. I never want to interact with you. It's like, don't message me. I don't want to see any. I don't want to see your fucking name in my chat. I don't want to see your name in my DMs or anything like that, bro. Because I don't know, man. He's got a gift for like fucking." Manipulation, bro. I I I don't want to be around anybody who's got that weird ass juju that can do that shit, man. I don't need to be. I don't. I don't. I don't trust myself to be spending time and having conversations with people that I know for a fact are like super manipulative, man. Yeah. Um. Ugh. That was uh. So that was that 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 was the whole situation for me. It's uh. I hate that I'm embarrassed by it, because, like, oh, I don't know. But, um, I'm probably going to post this on the same channel, just as, like, a 30-minute, a like, here's the rundown of my situation. Huge dra I'll, I'll tell you, like, huge Asmongold drama, or something like that. But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. He, like, he... He left a scar. Like the thing, I think the thing that's the worst thing about the whole situation is that like, he's like, he's definitely left a scar on me that still is a touchy subject for me even today. Like I still don't fucking really like talking about even getting screwed over for a grand like a uh like four or five years ago, man. Because it's like it's not just like getting scammed for a grand or something like that. It's like somebody I thought was a friend fucked me over and it and, and it and it makes me question if i can if i'm even a good judge of character like if i couldn't smell the snake in the grass or i couldn't see the snake in the grass like what does that say about me as a person if i can't identify when somebody is manipulating me or like trying to like socially engineer me or gaslight me or something like that bro i don't know i i, I, th I think he's fucked up person man you suck my fucking nuts in minecraft but um yeah it just you feel like a chump bro you feel like a chump you feel like an idiot who got who got like duped into some fucking fairy tale um i i was i was in the i was deep in the tunnel and he was dangling a carrot at the end of it and i just fucking goon stepped my way down it like a moron fucking thinking that there was there was a, a good out man like he 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 held the he held the the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, man, and I was just fucking Augustus Gloop, just slurping up that chocolate fucking chocolate river, man. <sighs> it's so very it's so very very weird. I I'm not saying that I don't see things that aren't true. But I don't think I'm, an, I'm somebody who ever really intentionally lies. So, like, I don't... I, I, I wonder if that means, that, like, I'm more susceptible to it. To somebody lying. Because, I like, half the shit in my life, I'm like, why would I even fucking lie about it? You know? I'm like, why would I lie about 
there's just some things you're like i think i feel like 99 percent like of the things that happen in my life i'm like why would i even lie about that like <laughs> do you know what i mean um i had every reason to believe that he was working on things behind the scenes for me because he was telling me that he was and why would he lie about it i had every reason to think that he was gonna get me that money why wouldn't why wouldn't i why would my friend not give me the money that he said he would so <sighs> i don't know but yeah i uh i'll post this in the same channel for anybody that because i i i was actually quite worried about coming on stream today because i was like i was expecting people to be like i saw you on Asmin Gold stream last night. I saw you on uh, Daily Dose of Asmin Gold today. Um, I'm surprised I didn't see any of that. But I, regardless, like, I, I think I've been balling this shit up for a long time. I'm so glad I can finally say fuck Paquito, man. Oh my god. I have been skulking behind the scenes like a fucking assassin trying to kill every business deal that I've ever heard he's ever been getting with people because I know he's a fucking snake in the grass bro everybody I ever speak to that says they're working with influencer stuff I'm like don't do it he will he will fuck you over it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when ah I can finally say it man so good he's such a bitch man ah uh. Is that why you're here, QQ? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, fuck, man. I've been trying to be covert ops, man. I don't need to do it anymore. Any any fucking creator that watches it, do not work with that rap bastard. Like, I don't know. But yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel for more fucking mental breakdowns. <laughs> oh, man.